Today we're going to talk about the production management solution and how your yard workflow flow can be improved. We'll show you how to build on your power link usage and effectively track your parts pulling process with production management. So we'll start in power link and we will uh, we'll go down and start in a work order and go to find part and I want a door for 17 Explorer and we'll pick this one, click on OK. And I've got several in stock, so I'm going to pick this one. And it's uh, $225, close that, close again. I need a customer and we're selling it to AAA Body Shop. Now, what I'm going to do is, you've probably seen this button at the bottom of your screen in all your order sections, uh, send order to production. If production management is not turned on at your yard, that'll be grayed out. But we're gonna click on send order to production. And I wanna save my changes and send to production. I'll say yes. And it's gonna launch that in Google Chrome. So once I get into Chrome, this is the screen your salesperson sees and they're going to send it to the web-based production management application. So the parts pullers can use that to get the part pulled. Uh, I'm going to pick a job type. So I'll click on the down arrow key and we'll say this is a part that is in the yard. And I'm gonna pick a drop location. So when I'm finished, I'm gonna put it on the north table. I'll go ahead and save the changes I just made. At that point, the salesperson can assign it to a parts puller or the parts puller can go in and get the job themselves depending on the workflow at your yard. Uh, this is probably a good time to mention that production management is highly customized to match what goes on at your yard. The job types will match your job types, yard pulls, warehouse pulls. Uh, maybe you have a customer waiting job type for things that need to get done fairly quickly. Uh, you could have a cut job type. Uh, if you had a person that drove the forklift that went up three or four stories to get the motors off the high shelves in your warehouse, you could have a job type for that. You can have a job type for check part, but again, these are customized to match the workflow at your yard. Uh, same thing with drop locations. Uh, drop location is where the parts puller will put the part when they're finished. So maybe you've got a table or a shelf for each of your routes. Uh, maybe you've got a UPS section, a section for will call, a section right behind the salespeople for small parts in the customer pickup area, concrete pad out beside the building where you put your motors and transmissions that, that are uh, gonna be shipped out or put on pallets. So that's all set to match your yard as well. Um, it's going to default to tomorrow at this time, uh, but I can change that due date if I say, well, they don't need it until Friday, or I, they don't need it till Monday. So I can click on that and close that window. Again, we're going to save what we've changed. And this is all the details about the job. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create job. That will kick off the job being in production management. If you'll notice at the top of the screen right now, the status is unassigned. The salesperson has sent the job to production manage, but, but nobody's working on it yet. Now, this is one job. We're gonna go out and look at the job queue that shows all the jobs in the system. So right now I've got 17 jobs in here uh, in my examples. Uh, you'll have probably 50 or 100 jobs at one time in your yard, but we're gonna go through these. Notice I've got a column here for job status. In some, I've got ordered in parts that have been ordered. I've got parts that are being pulled. I've got jobs that are unassigned. And I've got some that are new that haven't been created yet. I've got a column for actions and the actions will be dependent on the security settings for each employee. So you've got parts pullers that can start and finish pulls. You've got someone in your receiving area that can receive your ordered in parts. You've got somebody that can do inspections. 
you've got a dispatcher or manager type person that can do all of those functions. And of course your salespeople send jobs to production. And then once the job is complete, they'll close out the job in production. Now let's go back and look at one of these jobs. So we'll find this one that is right here. I'll click on it again. We've got several tabs on this screen. I've got on this details screen, everything about the part. It tells me the location and the grade and the vehicle it's off of and the store number if, if you're a multi-store. Uh, if you've got multiple stores in your PowerLink system, there's my interchange number, my price. It's a U category. That's the details tab. The next one over is the images tab, and this will show images straight out of PowerLink. In addition to that, your salesperson can add an image. Maybe they need to attach a cut sheet, or maybe they need to take a picture that the customer sent them and attach it showing they're looking for a certain piece of trim or uh, something on the part they're looking for. In addition to the pictures out of PowerLink, I've got an upload button so I can attach pictures to it and your parts puller, if they've got a tablet or a smartphone device, can attach pictures as well. Now, I'm not saying your parts pullers have to have tablets or smartphones. We have plenty of yards that use production management, and when the parts puller goes out to get the part, they just have a printout of the job that shows the part and the location and all the details about it, stock number and so forth, and they'll work off that piece of paper. But if your parts pullers do have a tablet or a smartphone, they can attach a picture maybe showing there's a little more damage or maybe the parts a little bit different and they need to check with the salesperson to check with their customer to see if this part will work. All this is done in the system instead of a parts puller having to drop what they're doing, run back up to the front office, maybe bringing the part they're not sure about, show it to the salesperson. All this is done on this web application. Anybody with internet access can see this. It doesn't require a PowerLink license for this device if somebody's working on it and just wants to see the production management. The notes section, again, is going to show your notes out of PowerLink, but you can add a note. So if you need to say, need hinges on this door that we're pulling, you can do that. I'll hit the plus sign and that's there for everybody to see. The customer section, it's going to show my customer information. And then the history tab is going to show everything that's happened, when this job was created, when it was updated, when it was initialized. And each one, notice it has a date and timestamp so you know who did the function and what they did. So this one says job detail updated. This is when I changed it to a job type of yard. The location is the back lot and it's going on the south table. So that again is all in the history section. Uh, let's go back to details. In addition to notes, there's one other thing that you can do to draw attention to something that needs to happen with an order is I've got a button that says add alert. So when I click on add alert, if I need to say uh, on today's UPS truck, please, and I'll hit add alert. Uh, it's got that red exclamation point because we want to draw attention to it. But even nicer, if I go back to the job queue, the view where I see all the jobs, notice I've got a column specifically for alerts. And if I hover over that alert, it'll show me a little uh, pop up that tells me what I typed into that box. So that's another way for the salesperson and the parts puller to communicate back and forth without having to send a text or get up and go find the parts puller to give them this message or try to call them on the phone or radio. So that alerts are nice for keeping information with each of the jobs. Uh, back on the job queue view, we'll pick one of these. Uh, it's got a committed date. There's my location. I think we've talked about just everything here. Uh, there's that alert button. And on this one, let's say, Received, ship, need, ship, info. So that's the shipping person saying, hey, I need some more information about this job and I'm able to draw attention to that with the alert box that everybody that sees the job queue will see. Now, 
uh, different people are going to want to see different information. So up here at the top, I've got a way to customize my view based on the logged in user. First is my column selector. So if I click here, I can say, okay, I want to see if I'm the salesperson, uh, I like this set here. I've got uh, who started the pull and who completed it and the job type. But let's say I also want to see the drop location. Where did they put it? So the right-hand column shows me all of the columns I've selected and the left-hand column shows me additional information that's available to me depending on what I want to see. So I'll click on apply. That drop location is there. You can change the width of all of, the, all of these columns. If you've got a narrower screen or you're looking up at this maybe on a tablet that doesn't have as much screen real estate, you can use this button up here at the top left, the menu button, to hide this menu on the left and to give you more room on the screen. So you can turn that off and on depending on what you wanna see. Now back to our column selector, if I click on that and I'm a parts puller, I'm gonna to wanna to see a different set of information. So actually let's cancel out of here. I'm gonna click on log out. I was logged in as a salesperson and I'm going to log in as a parts puller. So this parts puller is logged in and again, they can customize what they see. So they say, okay, I'm pulling the part. Um, I don't need to know who started the pull and I don't need to know who created the job or when it was created. Um, I don't need to see the uh, drop, uh, the job type. So I hit apply and I've trimmed down the columns that I'll see. In addition to that, in addition to the column selector, we've got the filters and a filter is another way to say search, but we can also customize this based on the user. So if I click on filter and I'm the parts puller that's logged in, maybe I'm looking for something to do. So I can say, I wanna see all the jobs that are unassigned. So instead of seeing 17 jobs, it shows me that there's seven jobs. I can take that a step further. If I'm the person that works in the warehouse or I'm the person that works in the yard, I can select, I just wanna see the yard part. So there's four jobs that I can take and go get these parts pulled. Uh, you can also customize your drop location. If I'm the person that does the shipping, maybe I only want to see things that have the UPS table location because I'm getting ready for the UPS truck coming in this afternoon. So that's all done with your filters. And again, that's done by user. Now, if I click on the X on this blue bar and I'm looking at these four and I'm finished with that, I can go back to seeing all the jobs just by clicking on the X next to the filter or search that I had selected. Now let's go ahead and log out and let's log back in as our salesperson. So we will go in We're logged in back to my job view. Let's talk about filters for the salesperson. If I click on filters, maybe I wanna see the jobs that I'm working with. So I just wanna see seven jobs instead of 17. But if at any time I wanna go back and see all the jobs to see how busy we are, maybe a customer's asking for something that they wanna know when they can have it, I can get rid of this filter and I can say, okay, you know, we're, we're pretty busy today. You'll, you'll have your part tomorrow. So that's the filters and it's done by user. You can click more than one field at a time as we talked about, and then you can get rid of all the filters by hitting the reset button or closing them out when we're looking at the job queue view. Up here at the top right also, I've got a search box. So if you had 50 or 100 jobs on the screen and you wanna see a certain job, you can search by several different fields. You can put in a customer name, you can put in a, click in that box. So I put in part of a customer name, or if you were working with, I was talking to somebody a minute ago about a door and I couldn't remember who it was, I can look for it that way. You can of course search by the job number. 
So if somebody says, hey, look at such and such a job, I can say 20294009, and it's gonna show me that one job. Now, let's go ahead and close that search. Notice I've got a completed tab here. So once jobs have been finished, they don't just disappear, they move over to the completed tab. So if I need to see something that happened yesterday or earlier this week, again, I've got that search where I can search for an order number, or I remember that I was working with a, a customer that was called AAA, or I remember I was looking at a alternator. So I can put whatever I want in that search box. Uh, let's go back to our job queue view. Another way to say if I'm looking at an order, a job, and I want to send that to a parts puller. So they're working on this, or I want to notify the dispatcher, my manager out in the yard, hey, I want to know what's going on with this. It's been sitting here for a while. I've got a button that says share page. So if I click on that, it's going to bring up a QR code. You've probably seen these on billboards and bus benches and other places where you can scan this with your mobile device. So I can say, I want to send this to someone. I can put in text that says, hey, this needs looking at. And I hit share. And the person that I send it to is going to receive this QR code. And it's just like a link. They can click on that with their smart device, with their phone, their tablet. And it will bring up exactly what I'm seeing here on the screen and it'll share this with them. So I do that and I get the message at the bottom right that says the link was sent. I close this window and I can go ahead and go back to this job detail. We'll go back to the job queue. Let's see what else we wanna talk about. I've got a group by section here. So if I want to see, I wanna group the jobs by job type and I'm gonna hit the plus sign to expand this. I wanna see how busy my warehouse parts puller is. And I see they're working on seven jobs. And uh, you know my eBay person only has one they're working on, the dismantlers are working on two. Just wanna see the workload at this time of day. Uh, let's go ahead and go, you can remove that grouping and go back to the view we were looking at. You can sort by these columns at the top. Uh, oftentimes you can click here to put the oldest jobs at the top because you want to say, hey, I want to get this job out of here. It's, it's been in there for a couple of days. What's going on with it? So you can sort by job status. You only want to see the jobs with, with alerts. Sort by job type, who's working on it. You can sort by these column headings. Of course, clicking on it puts it in order. Clicking again puts it in reverse order or alphabetical or numerical, depending on what kind of data you're looking at. Uh, let's go back up to the group by. I can group by job status. So maybe I want to see, uh, let's hit the plus sign. It's towards the end of the day and I've got, I'm gonna widen this column. I've got seven things that are unassigned. So maybe those people out in the yard need some help. I need to get somebody out of the warehouse to go out and, and, and give them a hand. We wanna get these jobs pulled so that they can be on the trucks we're gonna load in the morning. So that's grouping. Uh, and then we talked about the different logins. I'm logged in right now as a salesperson. I'm going to hit log out. And let's go back in as Paula, the parts puller. Now, there's a button on the left that says Express. And Express is designed for the parts pullers. And let me back up a second. When I go to Express, jobs, of course, will show me all 17 jobs we've got in the system right now. Express says, just show me the parts that I'm working on. And it's a scaled down bit of information. Each one of these buttons is referred to as a card. So I can see most of the information right here, but this is optimized for mobile. So if somebody is working off a smartphone or a tablet, with wireless or cellular out in the yard, they can see exactly what they're working on. So I can pick this one. Maybe I'm working on this wheel. I can click on it if I need more information or if I need to add an image like we talked about. I can take a picture 
and add it saying, hey, this wheel has some surface rust, is that okay? Or I can add a note right here. I can add an alert. Uh, I've got a button here at the bottom. If I can't find this wheel or this one's not like I thought it should be, I can hit replace part and I can pick a different wheel with this interchange number. And if everything's fine and I've pulled it, I can click on complete. So if I say complete, I get the option to print a delivery tag to put with the part, or I can print the job, or I can close this window. So we'll close it. Paula had three jobs a minute ago. Now she's down to two. That's the two she's working on. But if she were to go back and go to the jobs view, she could take start pull on another job. So you click on start pull and go to express to see what jobs you're working on. And there's those three jobs. Now, let's go ahead and go back and hit log out. Go back in as my salesperson. Keep in mind with the jobs, beside each job, I've got these three dots. That's some extra actions that I can perform. One of those is I can undo something. So if I didn't mean to create the job, if I lost the sale, I can void the job. I can print the job or the print the delivery tag, just like, like we saw with the parts puller screen a minute ago. If no one's working on it, like this one where the next action is to start the pull, I can click on that and I can assign it to someone. So I can hit assign and I can say, I want to assign this to uh, parts puller. So parts pullers at some yards that I've worked with, they get their own jobs as they finish and want to move on to the next thing, other yards, they, get, they assign the job to the parts puller and they just go in and see what has been assigned to them. Uh, like we talked about, you can click on the three dots. You can print the job. If you want to print out that you can take out in the yard with you, if you're not working with a smartphone or a tablet, you've got all the same information on there. Uh, you can even you can show print image thumbnails. If you have pictures with it, those will show up as well. If they're looking again for a certain, certain piece of trim or a certain shape of part that uh, they've, the customer wants. Uh, we'll close this window. Let's go back to the inspect parts. Right now, I don't have any parts that need to be inspected. My QA quality person would go here to see any jobs that they want to inspect. Let's go back to the jobs list. With inspections, you can set inspections for all part types or maybe just part types that, that you want to pay special attention to because you're trying to cut down on returns on headlights. Uh, let's see if I've got... Okay, so here's a part. Let's go ahead and receive this part and hit complete. Now notice the next action is to view the history. So I can hit view history. We saw this a minute ago. It's under the history tab in the job detail, but the way it's set, once I've completed that job, that's gonna drop off the screen and move over to my completed tab in an amount of time that I select. So maybe I want all my jobs to stay on the screen for a half hour or an hour, or I could have them disappear almost immediately again depending on the workflow that you want at your yard. Now, let's look at the job priority. So your dispatcher or manager type person can go in and set priority. We had 17 jobs on the job queue screen, but notice that my status, I only have five parts that are unassigned. So the other jobs, somebody's already working on them, but if I go to job priority, it shows those five jobs. I can put them in any order I want. This one I can say, I wanna make it first. And this job that's second, I wanna put it last because it's, it, I don't need it until the end of the day. So you can move those around by doing that, or you can pick one of the numbers in the drop down. but that's the priority that a manager or dispatcher person would set. And then when the parts puller went in and said, I'm looking for something else to do, you could have that assigned to them. Uh, let's go back up to the dashboard. The dashboard, of course, is just a snapshot of what's going on at your yard. 
I've got 17 active jobs. Uh, one has been pulled, seven are being pulled, six are unassigned, two new, uh, 16 are showing past due because I put these sample jobs in yesterday or the day before. And so they're showing up as past due because I've got one day set as my time. And then I've got two with alerts. Notice all these numbers are, oh, another way to set a filter. So I just wanna see my jobs with alerts. There's the two with the alerts. And again, I can hover over that and see what the alert says. Now let's clear that alert. I'm back to my list of jobs. Let's go down and look at reports. So you can get reports for what's, what's happened at the yard. You can get reports based on the job or based on the employees. So when I go into my jobs report, I can set a date range. Maybe I wanna look at the last three days or this week. I can do that and then I can, do I wanna include voided jobs or not? I can hit search and they'll show up. Let's go ahead and go back to the beginning of this week and close that. When I hit search, it's gonna show me 18 jobs. Notice I've got a button here to print it, but I've also got a button that I can export to Excel. So if I wanna send this over to an Excel spreadsheet and I want to work with the data some more, maybe move some columns around or look for something, all the job reports have an export to Excel function built in. Uh, we can do inspection reports. You can do reports on customers, on exports, if you're exporting to a uh, delivery system and you can see your shipped parts. Uh, under employee reports, you got your reports for your production tech, performance pay. Some yards will pay their parts pullers by the hour. Other yards will pay the parts pullers by the jobs that they do. So this is a good way to track that and see how long it took and how many jobs they've completed and know what to pay them. Uh, here's reports based on inspections, your salespeople and your total employees. So again, that's the report suite and all of those can be exported to Excel. Uh, let's go down to the settings screen. I talked about how we customize this to fit how parts move through your yard. So you would customize here and we've got some job types, if there's something you're not using anymore, you can uncheck it. So I'm not gonna use the walk-in and hit save. And this will show all the active job types I have right now. Uh, if you're using our e-commerce or e-link solution, you can assign those to a certain part type. Maybe you want them to go to an eBay job type so that somebody can get working on those first thing in the morning because you wanna get those shipped out pretty quick to keep your eBay feedback high. Drop locations, again, where the part's going to be put after it's pulled. Uh, you could send them to the locations that are here. You can turn these off and on. You can add other locations. We'll cancel out of here. Uh, days to finish pull, I talked about it's set to one day. That's why those jobs from a couple of days ago were showing over, uh, overdue. And then here's where it says how often, how long do you want your completed jobs to stay in the job queue? and this is set to almost immediately after one minute, they move over to the completed. Again, they're not lost, they're just moved over to the completed or the history section. Uh, the roles are set up at each yard. You can have roles for the different job types at your yard. Your administrator, of course, has all the permissions. Your dispatcher is a manager type person that has most of the permissions, the production techs, uh, are set up to see just what you want them to see. They can go into express, they can see the job queue. Quality control is what gives the person uh, the rights to go in and do the inspections. And then the salesperson is the one that can create jobs when they hit the send to production button in PowerLink. Um, here are the inspections that we've talked about. I've got a couple of test inspections in here. I've got one for motors and I've got one for headlights. So if I want to edit this, let's say we want to edit the one for motors and I go in and let's say I want to do this for transmissions as well. So 300s and 400s and that's just the title. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to search for 400 and we'll click on that to add it. They're both selected right here. We'll hit 
uh, we can hit save, but we're going to do our questions next. So our heat tabs put on uh, for the motor. We, we had an example where you could check the, the compression. So let's delete that and we'll say yes. And let's add a question and we want to say warranty sheet, something I've got pre-printed attached question mark. And I can, the answer type, do I want a checkbox when they do it? Do I want them to say yes, no, combo, multiple choice, multiple selection, or typed answer? If you want somebody to type in the box the results of the compression test, you could do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and just say this is a checkbox con confirm. Let's go back up and, and spell this correctly. Shouldn't talk while I'm typing. And so we'll hit save. And let's add another question that says, uh, you know, has it been put on the pallet properly? And we'll do a checkbox for that. And I can hit save because I've got special pallets that I use for my motors and transmissions. I can hit close, save that. So that's going to show up anytime I've got 300s and 400s. Here's my other inspection. So let's click on edit for that one. And let's look at the questions. So I've got a question that says, are any tabs broken? Does the lens need buffing? Are there any cracks in the lens? So you build these based on what you want your parts pullers to look for. Uh, this is, you can have the parts pullers do the inspection, or if you've got a dedicated inspection or QC person, they can do the inspection after the part's been pulled. A uh, yard I worked with recently, uh, they just wanted to stress that they wanted the parts to be looked over before they sent out. So they actually did a uh, inspection where they selected all part types and it was a one question inspection. It says, does this part meet our quality standards? And it just sort of reinforced that we wanna look over parts before we send them out. But the inspections are done based on what you want to happen at your yard. Uh, we talked about the performance pay. If you pay your parts pullers by the part instead of by the hour, you can assign a cost or a value to different part types in the yard. And the dispatch uh, is with deals with shipping and uh, routing if you wanted to create routes or show your common carriers when you send things out with uh, UPS or FedEx or your delivery service. Uh, let's see over here on the left, we talked about the, we're in the settings right now. We talked about the share page. Let's go back up to the job screen and look around and see if there's anything else I wanna mention. I will be checking the chat room for questions. If you've got any questions, go ahead and type those in and we'll try to answer those at the end of the session. Let's go back to job detail and we'll pick one of these. It's, let's pick one of these new jobs so I can click on it. Now, right now, this one has a job type and a drop location, but I can change that. It's not locked in. So I say, okay, this is gonna be a warehouse pull. And instead of the North table, I want it on the UPS table. And notice there's a save button, but if I'm on the phone, maybe I get distracted. When I, when I think I'm finished with this, I want to go back to the job queue. Well, you're not going to lose your changes, just like PowerLink. It'll say, wait a minute, do you want to leave the page and lose your changes? I do not. So I'm going to hit cancel and I'll go back up here and I'll click on save. Once I've done that, I can, again, my status is new. The job is in production, but it hasn't been kicked off yet. So I'll create the job. Now my status says unassigned. Uh, my next action is to start the pull. That's what a parts puller would click on, but I'm going to go ahead and click on start pull here. There's your status that says pulling part. The next one is to finish the pull. That would be done by the parts puller. Click on that. The status says parts pulled. And then the last action is to complete. That's usually done by the salesperson. So the salesperson would click on complete, meaning the job is is finished in production management, and that would be their cue to go over to PowerLink and finish out there. So they take the work order in PowerLink, they would promote it to a work order, 
or they're on a work order. They would promote it to a delivery ticket if you use delivery tickets, or they'd promote it straight to an invoice if they knew how it was going to be settled and print that out. And this job would drop off of the job queue view in a minute or so, whatever we got that set to. Uh, the three dots up here we mentioned, but again, I've got an undo button. So if I had two or three jobs I was looking at and I didn't mean to complete this one, I can hit undo. Did you want to do that? Yes, I did. Takes me back to the part pulled status. And then later, I, later on, I can complete it when I really meant to complete it. Let's go to another job and the jobs that are ordered in, I can, let's, let's make this an ordered in part. So if I were to go and say, okay, this is a brokered part and the PO is uh, in there, location doesn't really show up because it is a brokered part, but I'm gonna save that. Notice as soon as I create the job, it's not gonna say unassigned, it's gonna say part ordered. So that sits over in a separate area, so to speak. And then once the part is received, which is right here is as the next action, then I can finish it out. So if I'm at the job queue view, I will, let's refresh our screen because I've been talking here. So if I hit receive part on one of these that is a ordered in or brokered part, that's done. And then the last step again, just like with parts that have been pulled, is I can click on complete. 